So this video is going to be about how to sharpen a knife with a whetstone. At Tog Knives, we're on a mission to get everybody to fall in love with food prep. And a decent sharp knife really does transform the experience of food preparation. So there's really no point in investing in a decent knife if you're not gonna keep it sharp. A sharp knife, as well as being more pleasurable to use, is a safer knife as it won't slip sideways. This video is for complete beginners as well as those who've already used whetstones and are looking for tips to improve their technique. If you have a soaking stone, then you need to soak it in water for five or 10 minutes until the bubbles stop appearing. For a splash and go stone, just splash a bit of water on the surface. For blunt or chipped knives, or if you're not sure of the edge angles the knife already has, then start with a coarse whetstone to grind a new edge. Put this on a rubber mat or something to stop it moving around. You can also use a sink bridge. The advantage of these is that you have a supply of water to hand and it's easy to keep the process clean. Set your sharpening angle using the angle guide and make sure you keep this consistent throughout the sharpening process. This is probably the most important thing to remember. I generally start off with the traditional Japanese method. So have the stone vertical and move the knife up and down the stone using medium pressure and doing most of the work on the pull stroke. Hold the knife at an angle to the stone and use your fingers to control the pressure. This technique allows you to concentrate on one section of the blade if that is blunter or has a chip. Splash a bit more water if the stone starts drying out. A slurry will form and this is what's doing the work, so don't wash it off. Keep going until you've raised a burr. Now the burr is like a wire at the very apex of the edge and you can feel it with your fingertips. When you can feel the burr along the whole length of the blade, that means you've formed a new cutting edge. Turn the knife over and sharpen the other side until you can see the secondary bevels are about the same size. Towards the end of the process, I tend to switch to another method I call the pull method, which is when you pull the entire length of the knife over the stone. Put the stone at an angle on the bench. This method creates a completely even finish along the whole cutting edge. Then you need to remove the burr. You can do this by drawing the edge hard down a piece of wood or cork as if you were cutting through them. I've tested these methods though, and they are not as effective as a few firm strokes either side of a ceramic honing rod, because the rod is so incredibly hard. Feel the knife to check you've removed the burr completely, and then test the knife will cut paper easily. If it will, repeat the sharpening process on a medium whetstone to refine the edge. You don't need to do it for so long, probably only about one minute each side. Then use the ceramic honing rod and refine the edge further to ensure the burr is removed. Test the sharpness again. The knife should now cut newspaper. If you want to go sharper, repeat the process yet again with a fine whetstone. Don't use the honing rod afterwards as it's coarser than the stone. Then a final step would be polishing stone, a clean Belgian blue or a leather strop. You can use lighter pressure for these final steps and raise the angle by a couple of degrees to make sure you're sharpening the actual apex of the knife. You only need a few strokes on either side. After that, your knife should shave hair off your arm. That's it. Flatten your whetstones by rubbing two together or rubbing one on a diamond plate. And remember to dry soaking stones completely before storing them. Maintain your edge with a honey rod or fine whetstone every week and you won't need to go through this process too often.